Hi, I'm Tomar Itan from Dell Technologies. Starting with Parston OS 3.0, async file replication is available. This feature can be used to protect against a storage system outage by replicating a copy of data to a remote Parstore system. In this demonstration video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the new Parstore file replication feature and perform a failover of a VMware NFS data store to a remote site. For the purpose of this demo, I deployed two Parstore clusters running version 3.0 and configured replication between them. Under the Settings tab in Parstore Manager, we navigate to the network IPs and click on the File Mobility tab. Here, we configure the IPs that will be used for file replication. As you can see, the clusters are already configured for remote replication for block, vivol, metro, and file capabilities. On the source cluster, I click on storage and select NAS servers. Here, we can see the NAS server that I deployed in advance. On top of that NAS server, I created a one terabyte file system and mounted it to the vSphere cluster as NFS 4.1 data store. In this data store, I deployed a Windows virtual machine that generates random workload. Under the host access tab, we can set the access details for each host. By navigating to the vSphere client, we can see our NFS data store that is mounted to the E6i host in my cluster and the virtual machine that is running on top of it and generating random workload. File system and NAS server replication sessions are created by assigning a protection policy with a replication rule to a NAS server. Once applied to a NAS server, the NAS server and all the underlying file systems will be replicated to the destination system. An individual replication session will be created for each file system associated with the NAS server being replicated and for the NAS server itself. As you can see, I don't have any NAS server or file system on the remote Parstore cluster. To set a replication, I select the NAS server and assign the protection policy. After a few seconds, the initial synchronization process starts and the objects are created on the remote Parstore cluster. It is recommended that the host and application I.O. is stopped on the source file system before the planned failover, as the failover will disable production access to the original source storage system. So I navigate to the vSphere client and shut down the VMware virtual machine. As you can see, the file system is now fully synchronized and we are ready to perform a planned failover. We navigate to protection and select the replication tab. Here, we select our source resource and click on planned failover. Here, we have an option to reprotect and reverse the direction of the replication between the source and the destination after the failover. When a planned failover starts, the replication session fails over after completing a synchronization between the volumes. The synchronization process before the failover ensures that all data is replicated since last RPO triggered or manual synchronization. As you can see, the host access rules have been replicated to the remote cluster. After the planned failover completes, the destination storage resource is available for production I.O and the original source no longer allows read and write IOPS. By navigating to the vSphere client, we can see that the ES6i hosts lost access to the NFS data store during the failover, and the connection has been restored after a few seconds. At this stage, we can power on the virtual machine, which is now running on our remote Parstore cluster. By navigating, the remote Parstore cluster, we can see that the virtual machine has started generating some workload. If we click on the File Systems tab, we can find really useful live and historical information about the latency, IOPS, and bandwidth 
and also IO size of the file system. The tight integration between Parstore and VMware provides us visibility to the performance metrics of the virtual machines running on this NFS data store, such as CPU and memory utilization and uptime. I really hope you find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.